Eli Lilly shares our hire this morning. A panel of independent advisors to the FDA recommended Eli Lilly's Alzheimer's drug, Donanamab, monoclonal antibody, it may be, paving the way for the treatment uh, to receive full approval in the United States later this year. Joining us now is Dr. Howard Phillip, Alzheimer's uh, Drug Discovery Foundation co-founder, chief science officer. I was actually, uh, welcome, doctor. It's good to see you. I, I, I was you, talking Senator. about one, one of your uh, op-ed pieces uh, yesterday in, in Sydney Farber and comparing this to the early days of, of chemo, where there's kind of a, I don't know if I'd call it a, a blunt instrument, but certainly the first of, uh, uh, this isn't the first, obviously we have the biogen drug, but we're at a point with the treatment of Alzheimer's, we're in the, the early stages, and we don't know yet exactly what treatment is going to look like five or ten years from now, but this is definitely a positive start. Absolutely. It's, it's really the first time that we're having any disease-modifying drugs that could ultimately lead to even prevention. I think the future is going to lie, just like in cancer, in combination therapy with precision medicine driven by biomarkers. And we've had tremendous advances in biomarkers. There's blood tests available uh, that will be really driving the field as we go forward and brain scans that are driving the field forward. So it's, uh, I've been doing this over 40 years. It's just an amazing time in our field. It's really having, we're really having breakthroughs and success for the first time. You, you note that it's possible for these drugs, which I guess work on amyloid plaques to clear those a little bit, to, to, uh, to put the disease into what looks like almost uh, remission, and it could last up, up to four years. What does that do to our understanding of what the pathology, the underlying uh, or epidemiology, or whatever it is, what is, what is happening right. with all, what's happening with Alzheimer's? Right? By, by getting yeah. rid of the plaques, if it puts it in remission, are the plaques causing the Alzheimer's, or we still don't know? Well, it's part of the story, clearly, because by getting rid of the plaques, we're able to slow the disease down by about 30, 35 percent. But the next question now is, what we're, how are we going to get to 100 percent slowing? And for that, we know, again, it's going to be combination therapy. For example, we know there's a lot of inflammation in the brain that probably is driven in part by the plaques. And so the largest uh, category of new drugs in development now, uh, out of 75% that are non-amyloid drugs, is uh, drugs that are directed against the inflammation that's in the brain, uh, partly driven by the plaques. And so I think you, you're going to see um, monoclonal antibodies to amyloid combined with other monoclonal antibodies, anti-inflammatories, neuroprotective agents, agents against the vascular component of the disease, and even gene therapy. Okay. See, there's a lot that, that you said there that, that, that clears a lot of it up. So the precision medicine that we're talking about, we're not exactly sure what that is yet. It, it's yet to be discovered, but it looks like, uh, is, this, is this relatively recent information about the inflammation being um, such a big component of Alzheimer's? Well Actually, when Alzheimer described his disease in 1906, he described inflammatory cells around the plaque. <laughs> and I, I can tell you that going back uh, to the early 1980s, there's been a lot of interest in inflammation. But it's been hard to get the right drugs and demonstrate efficacy with those anti-inflammatories. And I, so that, that's the next step. We have novel anti-inflammatories that specifically target the brain cells that pr promote the inflammation called microglia. Why? And that happens with, uh, naturally with aging, doctor? Or is there something well, else that kicks it off? Well, with the, one of the hallmarks of aging, as we all hear about, is, is, is inflammation. And, but when we usually speak okay. of it, it's systemic inflammation, uh, inflammation from things like arthritis and other chronic diseases that basically get into the blood and into the brain and, and turn what, what's called prime these microglial inflammatory cells to become active. Now, in some ways, that's a good thing because it's actually the microglial inflammatory cells that eat the plaques. That's how the monoclonal antibodies actually work. They, they bind to the plaques and tell these inflammatory cells, you know, come on over here, you got to get rid of this stuff. But at the same time, when those microglial cells become too active, it becomes, the inflammation becomes damaging. So we're trying to thread the needle between not uh, incre decreasing the the ability of the microglia to uh, eat plaques and other debris in the brain. We don't want to stop that, but we want to m ensure that they don't get too hyperactive because that can be neurotoxic. That sounds almost like a immuno 
It's just yeah. It, yeah. It, it's so many corollaries that, to the way we what, what we found out about cancer. It's it's threading needles all the time. I think, but doctor. It's exactly. Kind of, and, and and cancer clearly, most people with cancer are on two or three drugs, maybe four drugs, and and now immunotherapy has revolutionized cancer treatment. And I think we're going to see the same thing with Alzheimer's. These are diseases of aging, and the fundamental processes uh, biologically of aging are shared between cancer and Alzheimer's disease and vascular disease and so on. So we're looking at fundamental mechanisms of aging because by far, aging is clearly the leading risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. Aging is a key risk factor, I, I guess, for everything, uh, it, it seems yeah. like, uh, doctor. But try stopping it. And maybe we need to stop that. Yeah, aging and obesity. Maybe, and, and aging causes obesity, too. Uh, maybe we need to stop the aging, uh, doctor. Can you work on that next? Um, know, well, the there's a lot of interest now. I think for the first time, there's really some really hard science between aging therapeutics. And uh, we're starting to look at that in a more holistic way. For example, um, the, the drug semaglutide, which is uh, so popular now, all these GLP-1 agonists like uh, Ozempic and, and yeah. the others, they, they're showing that they can inhibit and slow uh, the progression of not just obesity, but other illnesses with old age. And in fact, uh, Novo Nordisk is conducting a big clinical trial of uh, semaglutide for Alzheimer's disease. So there's a lot of common threads here. 